Do you have any stories about traveling with Marty Jannetty when you were the new rockers with him? Because he's known for both his demons and his ribs. Uh, as far as traveling with Marty Jannetty, um, I've got tons of stories. Some of them I really can't discuss here. Um, uh, and as far as traveling with him, as far as his ribs, Marty was like, uh, was like traveling with Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I don't know how his brain works, but like, if you leave him alone for 30 seconds, he starts looking around the room and thinking of shit to do, to mess with you. Um, for example, one time, like if we went to an area and we were gonna stay in a particular town for a hotel for three or four days, he didn't like to eat out. He would go to save money, he'd go to the grocery store. So he'd sit, buy groceries and then leave them set in the room um, on the air conditioner or whatever to keep them cool. Um, and uh, I think Glenn Jacobs had s slept in our room the night before and then he, so we had a roll away in the room and I was taking a shower, which is never good because you're leaving him alone in the room. Um, and I hear him out there doing something and I like, I know he's up to something. And uh, he had taken the roll away, had made it like an accordion and stuck it between the bathroom door that opened in and the closet wall because there wasn't much space it was real narrow and then sat the jug of milk on the mattress so that when i opened the door the mattress went like this and shot the jug of milk across the bathroom and crashed against the wall and milk went everywhere and uh it's just like who thinks of that how do you, how does your brain work like that went to go take a shower one time and the water was all greasy because he had went and taken a shower before and taken the shower head off and stuffed it full of uh, KY jelly. Uh, where did you get the KY jelly? Why are you kept bringing it with you? And you took the time to take a shower head off. How'd you get it off? <laughs> eight, eight IcoPro amino tablets that had been left in his garage uh, for years and had like kind of brown edge on them. It gave him horrific gas, and the only reason he ate them was because it gave him horrific gas, so he would fart on the plane and bother people. I remember we were at San Antonio in Texas, and they had this little closet of a room where they were having the agent meeting, and he's like, watch this. I go, okay, and he gets a big smile on his face, and he walks in the agent room, and then nothing, nothing, and all of a sudden the door opens, and he walks out laughing, shuts the door. He says, stand right here. I don't move. About 30 seconds later, Jesus Christ! And they all come piling out of there because he'd went in and busted ass, didn't tell anybody, and then shut the door again and left him sealed in that little small coffin of a room with him shitting his pants. Who does that? All the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why do you think uh, he was hired and refired so many times? Because he must hold the record for the amount of time. I think he actually does. I think she, he beat Iron Cheek. Um, because uh, Vince will always bring you back if he thinks he can make money with you. And Marty Jannetty um, is probably the most underrated performer in the history of wrestling. Um, because everybody goes, oh, you don't want to be the Marty Jannetty of the team. Why not? He's an incredibly talented guy. He, he was the foundation for he and Sean together. Sean, more charismatic. Uh, much better politician backstage and Marty of course had his own personal issues and demons uh, but Marty was an incredibly talented guy really really talented guy and I don't think he gets near the credit that he deserves um, for his ability in the ring or 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 the matches that he's had so you know when people say hey you, you, you know well he's the Marty Jannetty of the team you might want to take that as a compliment and not as, a, as the slight that everybody intends it to be. Marty Gennetti talked to us a little bit about being roommates with you guys, which he said it was great, but uh, any memories of being roommates with the Rockers? It was, it was great, uh, but uh, they were never, they just, because we knew them from Minnesota. In Minnesota, me, Sag, and Sean were together in the same room. Sag had the queen size, and it was a king size, so I slept with Sean, and no pun intended, everybody out there, all you haters. We were good <laughs> friends. But, uh, and then when we went down to, uh, you know, Tennessee, I think they thought they could just move in with us. But the funniest thing was, 
we had a fake fireplace. So Marty stepped on Marty stepped on the floor. Sean was on the couch, and me and Sag had it was a one bedroom now, not two bedroom. And Sag and me stepped on twin size beds in the one room. And so we woke up and someone was smelling the smoke. Well, what the hell's going on? And it's a fake fireplace. It's a gas fireplace. Marty's throwing all his bills in there. He almost caught the whole apartment on fire. <laughs> And he went, what the hell are you doing? And yeah, we had to put the fire out. He thought it was a real fireplace. There was a chimney, but he was he was in that mode and having a good time. And I guess you had the Rockers' first ever match. Uh, Marty Jannetty recently did an interview with us, and he told us it was you and Scott Hall against Sean and Marty. Yeah, I it was. Uh, we went out to. That's kind of a funny story, man. Me and Sky had met Harley Race, and that was Harley Race's territory up in Kansas City. And we weren't being used in Charlotte, and me and Scott just wanted an opportunity to, you know, get some ring exposure. So we decided to go to Kansas City. So we drove to Kansas City, we get there, and we went to the place where we were supposed to meet Harley. And when we got there, we were told Harley was in Japan. So there's a guy named Bob Geidel that was there, who evidently was Harley's partner, and he had no idea who we were. And so we drove from Charlotte to Kansas City, and it didn't look like we even had a job there, because Harley wasn't supposed to be back for another month. But anyway, um, Geidel turned out to be a pretty good guy, and uh, he took us in, and um, me and Scott traveled the roads. We drive 3,000 miles for like $200 a week. I mean, it was, it was hard and we paid our dues, that's for sure. And um, Shawn Michaels came in, Janetti was already there, I believe, and we had match, matches with, uh, with those two guys all over that territory. And, uh, you know, it was a good experience for all four of us. Ibsen wants to know, were you there in Germany in 1994 when Marty took the tour bus from the driver with the wrestlers in it and was speeding, which led to Pat Patterson having to fire him that day? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But, but um, I can see it, you know, and, and, and just think about that for a second. I, I don't know. If I wasn't, I don't remember that. I think I would have remembered that in 94. Uh, so, no, I don't remember that. But just put that That's in awesome. your mind. No, That's no, awesome, though. That He's still head. on the, the tour. <laughs> yes, in Germany, you know, and w what are you thinking? And you get back. What do you What do you think Pat's going to say? Hey, good job, Marty. All right. What, I mean, honestly, what do you think is going to happen? He probably yeah. said, "What does he do?" He goes, "The wolf." Woo He's going to pretend it was the wolf. Remember his alter ego. He'll say, "It wasn't me. It wasn't Marty. It was the wolf that did it." There's the notorious story about the Rockers when they were in your territory. Can you tell us what exactly happened there? Uh, we recently interviewed Marty Jannetty, but he wasn't very specific, and he was saying it was basically Sean's fault that uh, you guys ended up firing them, I guess. Uh, you know what happened? Uh, and again, it's hard. I don't want to criticize uh, good people, close friends of mine, but uh, Bob, Bob Armstrong was real hot for us as Bullet Bob and at that time in, in Alabama. And he had three sons in there working, uh, Brad, uh, Steve, and, uh, and Scott, and they were all working, and and uh, and uh, they were pu they were pushing. Uh, uh, they wanted to, uh, me to push Tracy Smothers and his son Steve Armstrong, uh, very very strong, uh, the Southern boys, or so, and uh, and so that was the same time that we brought these guys in. Now, I looked at the Rockers and I said, whoa, man, we're going to do this. And uh, I didn't have any problem with it, just saying, man, this is it. We're going to shove this team nine million miles an hour. Well, that right away got a, a bad feeling going with a real dear friend of mine, Bob Armstrong. And Bob thinking, you know, you've already got, what are you hiring these guys? What do you want these guys when you already got Steve and Tracy and the Southern boys and you can give them a big push and they're going to draw you the money you need and all. And I just said, well, they had been there for a while. And so I just 
made a change and and, uh, and started pushing the rockers really hard and uh, and it, there was uh, problems it's got to be problems uh, enough to where uh, I told my brother uh, Ron that uh, that I didn't want to really deal with it uh, so he said okay and so he uh, I, I took a vacation and Bob Armstrong took the book to do the booking and when he did he fired the rockers right there and said okay we're going to go with uh, Steve and, uh, and, and Tracy and um, and my brother just went what <laughs> you know <laughs> and, and I you know I'm sitting in the background there and I said hey I said uh, you didn't know that was coming? I said, oh, he was like, gosh, you can't do that. You know, we can't do that. So, Bob stepped back. I came back in, took the book again, uh, hired him back right away. And uh, probably a month later, that dissension, that, uh, that hardship between good friends good friends that have worked together for years and years that uh, that I took a stand I said listen I want these boys that's it and then uh, then the New York wanted them and so that's it's the easy answer so now we're pushing Steve and Tracy <laughs> but right. but uh, but I, I saw the quality of these guys and I, I knew I knew Sean but without a doubt really going places and uh, I, I wanted to be on the ground floor of that and to make a lot of money while doing it. So that explains when I was doing my shoot interview with Tracy he said he felt a lot of heat from Sean in the WWE's dressing room and that explains probably where a lot of that heat stems from if Sean was aware of some of the stuff going on. There, there, was, there was some hard feelings. Uh, because, like I said, I had Tracy and, and Steve living there and and starting to work with them. And then I just had a chance to get my hands on these boys, the rockers. And uh, and, uh, and I said, oh, i turned down that good talent. I'm not going to do it. We're just going to deal with this. And it wound up being one of those deals very difficult to deal with without hardship of dear friends and people's families you know stuff that happens but you know I've always said you know dad gummit man the bottom line is uh, you know we we do what we need to do to fill up the house and to uh, and to choose the best talent and use them the best we can Marty Gennetti's told me he's had sex with like 5,000 women I'm sure you've heard this story that Marty is claiming that he killed somebody now. What do you make of all of that? Marty, Mar Mar Marty must have been all, you know, the, the post went down a day or so afterwards. Marty goes on binges, as you know. I know Marty, I know Marty, I would say, well, 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 but they travel with Marty a lot. Marty's a very likable guy, but... He, when he goes on binges, he, his um, Facebook stories maybe five years ago, four years ago, they used to be long, and they got very deep with stuff he did. You know what I mean? And uh, a woman died in his house, and he, he was supposed to be up in the attic about five years ago. You heard about that, right? No, I had no Orlando. idea what happened. Other than what she was found dead in the, in the room. I don't actually know the full story, but that was a court case about that. But he, he was never fined or tried for that. He was found upstairs. You know what I mean? Now, he wrote so much, so much gaga about different things that, you know, and that I think earlier on the police letter used to let it go. It was heavy. And that, you know, I couldn't, but, you know, when he gets on the binge, you know, one WrestleMania, we're in, in, we're in the hotel where the um, convention uh, WrestleCon was, and there was a and there was a, a lobby bar, a big a big big lobby with a fountain in the middle and a bar off to the side that was all open to it. 
fuck it. We were drinking with Marty there, and all of a sudden, Marty jumped in the pool. And that was all the fans, you know, Wrestle, WrestleCon, you know how bad that is. I actually saw Marty at the Orlando WrestleCon stumbling drunk on the, on the yeah, grass. Yeah, he was in, in the fountain, fountain, and he lay there and passed out in the fountain. <laughs> I think that was a WrestleMania afternoon. We just interviewed Marty Gennetti, and uh, it was one of my, the funnier interviews I ever did. And he actually did the impression of how he used to say Jacques that you told me about. But Do you want me to tell you? I'll know by heart what he said. <laughs> sure. Fuck. <laughs> and Jacques didn't like that. He never liked it. Like he, that if you wanted to get on his nerves, he just had to uh, make that noise. <laughs> he hated it. Was Marty always like a wild guy? Even back in those days, was he? Like he seems pretty crazy in this shoot interview. I don't know if you've seen any of the clips. You're very busy, but. Is that what he's uh, like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, you know, from what I've seen from him, like I've, we've worked him so many times, uh, him and the uh, one, two, three kid, and he was pretty laid back at the time. Uh, maybe on his night out, he was like uh, crazy a little bit, but I haven't seen, uh, you know, I think Marty was like, when he was talking to Jacques and he was making that impression <laughs> and saying his name like that, and um, Jack was telling him, Marty, don't do that, I don't like it, and Marty would stop after a few times, and um, it was all good, you know, so I didn't get to see him all that crazy, I heard a lot of stories about him, uh, but the time that we were working against each other, he was pretty... Laid back. Well, let's, let, there's something you wanted to say about Marty Jannetty before we uh, get off topic. Marty Jannetty did a shoot interview with me recently, and he said that Nobs urinated on Elvis's hey, grave. He's, he's a bullshitter. <laughs> well, first of all, Marty's ankle was so fucked up he couldn't even excuse my language, but he couldn't even make it over the wall. He couldn't. We, we couldn't even lift him over the wall, and it was hard getting over that wall. I mean, it's all jagged at the top. So I jumped over first, and then I told Sagan, uh, Sean, that I used to be in the army. I got the, I got the words. And don't worry, I guess. I, so all you heard was like, like a tank going through leaves. You could hear me a mile away, and they had guards all over the place. And when I got to the tree, I went, Who do you? Who do you? And Sagan and they were looking at each other, and on top of Elvis as well, going. Really, they really think that there's an owl hanging out at Elvis's place somewhere going hooty hoo in the middle of the morning. <laughs> you know? So we made it up there. Marty never made it in, but we made it all the way up to the grave and we all had a beer at his grave, which was great. And then all of a sudden the security found us and said, they're over here. So Sag went over the fence. Uh, Marty went over the fence, and I was so out of breath to get up there, I couldn't make it over the fence. I crashed through the, the barn fence in the back, so then I couldn't pull myself back over the wall, so I had to bury myself in leaves up to my neck, and I stayed in there for about an hour to let everything calm down. So, uh, I was real quiet so I could find the smallest spot in the, in, you know, in where his wall is, because there's a couple spots it goes down the where I could grab and pull myself and over And this is there. in Memphis at Elvis's old oh, house, yeah, right? Yeah, For yeah, anyone crazy. doesn't know. Yeah, but, yeah. but Marty said he was there, and I shouldn't say this, I shouldn't say that, but Nob just went and got up and urinated on Elvis's grave. I said, I didn't do that. And Marty wasn't even there, the fucking liar. What the hell's he talking about? <laughs> He's making up his own stories like Hacksaw does in his book. Hacksaw <laughs> uses half of our stories to explain his stories and he said to me whoever writes the book first kid gets to tell the stories 